Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. During Christmas time and during basically New Year holiday time, I usually watch a lot of uh, sci-fi movies and I watch a lot of movies that might not be that good and this is actually one of those movies, The Mag. This movie actually features um, a very interesting yet somewhat uh, not highly realistic story about discovery of the extinct uh, mega-sized shark, uh, the Megalodon. Megalodon, as we know today, actually did exist. Uh, these were extremely, extremely large animals. And uh, for the most part, uh, we think they all went extinct about 2.6 million years ago during the so-called Pliocene uh, megafauna extinction event. Now, uh, for the most part, we don't really know exactly what made them go extinct, um, but their recent uh, hypothesis from this serious person by the name of Adrian Mallet uh, from Kansas University correlate several events that happen around the same time and essentially what he suggests is that there's a high chance that maybe those animals, those large animals living in the water known as megafauna actually died because of a, an event similar to supernova. Now um, let's actually talk a little bit more about what he suggests and why it might make some sense even though it might not explain everything uh, super accurately. So first of all, what exactly happened during this event? Well, we know that a lot of really, really, really large uh, animals used to live in the oceans, including, of course, the megalodon that you see right here in the picture, although a more realistic representation of a typical megalodon is here. So it's about 18 to maximum 24 meters in length, significantly larger than the largest shark today, but uh, still not as large as a, as a typical whale. And there were actually a lot of other very large animals, including extremely large turtles, like we're talking about turtles that were several meters in length, also quite a lot of large sea cow-like animals, and um, even very large uh, seabirds. And for the most part, a lot of these actually went extinct. As a matter of fact, interestingly, it was the turtles that were affected the most. About 43% of them essentially disappeared completely. Only the smaller species survived. And also about 35% of all of the seabirds that used to be around, and also approximately 9% of all of the sharks. Now, um, only for some reason, uh, the megafauna of oceans was affected. Not a lot of life on land actually seems to have been affected at all. As a matter of fact, um, for this reason, most scientists today suspect that something may have happened to the oceans and either the food uh, disappeared or maybe the actual oxygen levels changed. And one of the most prevalent theories right now is that, well, it's possible that uh, maybe, just maybe, it was due to the beginning of the Ice Age. And so because the Ice Age involves essentially water turning into ice, um, a lot of food disappeared and many of those large animals did not really have anything to sustain themselves and so they kind of died. And for the most part, this is actually um, the most accepted hypothesis right now. However, uh, the person I mentioned previously suggests that, well, there are actually other signs out there, specifically on our planet, that um, suggest that maybe just maybe something else happened. And specifically, he looked at an isotope of iron, iron-60. Iron-60 is a very unstable element that converts uh, to nickel and um, could not have actually survived on the planet if it was originally produced when the planet was made. In other words, um, if we find any iron-60, it probably came from outer space. And it just so happens that we did find um, iron-60 in the deposits from about 2.6 million years ago. And this also suggests that some kind of a space uh, event, or basically some sort of event that involved the bombardment of our planet with iron-60, occurred around that time. Now, um, of all events, we know that usually produce iron-60, um, supernova are the usual culprits. Uh, normally, if you find iron-60 somewhere, it's probably because a supernova nearby occurred and bombarded our planet with this relatively radioactive isotope. Um, now, when supernova happen, obviously other things happen as well. And specifically here, we're talking about large amounts of radiation that most likely reached our planet. And so the main idea here is that it's very possible that this radiation actually did bombard our planet for uh, a period of several months and created such a tremendously large amount of these things right here, muons, which are pretty heavy electron-like uh, particles, that um, it literally irradiated our planet and specifically the waters of our planet where the muons could actually even reach deeper into the water. And 
because the creatures affected were only large creatures, it's possible that because they kind of cover bigger surface area, because they're bigger, they would be irradiated much more. And so um, he suggests that this uh, type of an event would actually bombard all of these large creatures, including Megalodon, with so much radiation that they just couldn't survive it. And for the most part, the large creatures died, the smaller ones uh, that were not affected by this as much survived and then prospered for the rest of the Ice Age until today. And interestingly, right after the death of Megalodon, that's when a lot of whales started to become larger and larger in size as well, because they literally lost their apex predator. No one was actually was able to kill them as much anymore until humans came into existence and started hunting whales. But for the longest time, um, right after the extinction of Megalodon, that's when waters were suddenly safe for whales to become bigger and bigger. But going back to the supernova, um, so if it actually did influence the um, extinction event of these large animals, how close would it have to be? Well, it would have to be pretty close, within about 100 light years away from our planet. And most likely, and this is actually the suggestion from Adrian Mallet himself, uh, there was more than one supernova. It's possible that... This was actually a multi-supernova event with several stars exploding at the same time and creating an extremely large uh, array of radiation and, of course, various particles like Iron 60 that then came to our planet and bombarded it with all sorts of beautiful, highly energetic particles. Although the more accurate statement here would be that supernova may have actually either accelerated or um, initiated the extinction, it's possible that they didn't really cause the extinction itself, but it's possible that they added to the effect. On the other hand, it also um, kind of helps us realize that we don't really understand how extinction works to begin with. We do have extinction going on right now that's mostly human caused, uh, for the most part at least, but we don't really know uh, what else may actually cause these events. So. For the longest time, we assumed that asteroid collisions or comet collisions may actually cause something of extinction-like proportions, but we have absolutely no proof of that. It's just a hunch, in a sense. A, a scientific hunch, nonetheless, but still. And uh, supernova have always been sort of the culprits of some events. So we've always suspected these events to kill off large amounts of animals if they happen close to our planet. But once again, the only thing we know for certain is that when this extinction was actually happening, or when it, in a sense, started, uh, there might have been, or there very likely have been, at least one supernova near our planet. And this is where the Iron 60 is coming from. Whether it actually influenced the extinction of these beautiful animals right here, or if it even somehow influenced the Ice Age, is another question. So, we can't really say more until more studies are done, or until we actually witness it somewhere else happening, hopefully not on our planet, and see the effects of both supernova and, of course, Ice Age and various objects like asteroids or comets colliding with certain planets. And anyway, on that note, I'm going to finish this video here, and, uh, well, if you haven't watched the mag, uh, maybe give this one a skip, because it's not particularly that good, but it's still worth watching for the sakes of seeing how tremendously large the Megalodon actually was, because they do get the size relatively correct. On the other hand, there's actually quite a lot of video games that have Megalodon in them, so maybe just go play those games instead, because it's probably more fun. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about uh, sciences, space and our planet Earth from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And you know, uh, since I do have to eat once in a while, um, if you would like to support this channel, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me uh, eat better food. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.